fear is the mind killer. Back in 2013, Denis Villeneuve was about to release two high quality films that ultimately led him into bringing us three of the best films of the decade. Before Sicario, Arrival and Blade Runner 2049 came Enemy and Prisoners. In particular, Enemy uses messages to communicate the grief and self-exploration that many of us go through in a more extreme sense through Jake Gyllenhaal's Adam Bell. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on Enemy, exploring how filmmaker Denis Villeneuve creates a film full of thematic meaning. This video essay continues my Road to Dune series, where I create content on all of the Dune adaptations, Frank Herbert's original novel, Denis Villeneuve's filmography, and his upcoming 2021 film. During the build-up, I will also be covering any news and information surrounding the director's latest project. To stay up to date with all of these videos, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into Denis Villeneuve's Enemy. So Enemy follows an awkward professor named Adam Bell who lives a dull and repetitive life in a world lacking uniqueness. Every day he wakes up in his empty apartment that has no personality to it, he works at a university where he lectures about totalitarian regimes and how they're created, he goes home, and he sleeps with a woman whom he doesn't seem to have any emotional attachment to. And so the cycle begins once again. In his initial lecture, Adam talks to his students saying, control, it's all about control. Every dictatorship has one obsession and that's it. As Adam alludes to, they kept population busy with entertainment, but other dictatorships used other strategies to control ideas. The knowledge, how do they do that? Lower education, they limit culture, censor information, they censor any means of individual expression, and it's important to remember this, that this is a pattern that repeats itself throughout history. In this sense, Enemy is a simple story used to illustrate a moral lesson about what it's like to live under a totalitarian state without knowing it. Adam is living in an oppressive state that limits creativity and any means of expression, hence why he lives in a bare apartment in an empty relationship with a woman, doing the same repetitive activities that leave him unfulfilled. The central irony in all of this is that even the main character, though he is an expert on the ways of totalitarian governments, doesn't see the web that's overtaken the city until he's already stuck in it. But Adam's vacant world turns upside down when he sees a film which another professor recommends and notices that an extra looks exactly like him. He, of course, becomes obsessed and gives himself a purpose, a conflict to his dull storyline where he lacks confidence and has no direction in his life. He must find out who this man is, and this leads him to Anthony, an actor who lives a fulfilling life, has a pregnant wife, a stylish apartment, and is a part of some secret sex society that's never truly explored. Anthony is basically everything Adam isn't. The actor is living an ideal life just out of Adam's reach. While Adam barely has a girlfriend, Anthony has a young, angelic wife who is pregnant with his child. 
Yes, she is suspicious of Anthony, but she's invested in their relationship, unlike Adam's girlfriend. On the other hand, Adam, who's always stumbling over his words, has a boring apartment, empty of any decoration, while Anthony is confident, quite arrogant, and lives in a high-rise building that any person would dream of having. Anthony's world reminds Adam of his lack of motivation and his own life, in the sense that he feels he has no meaning because the society he lives in has stripped him of his potential, the potential that is Anthony's full reality. In the film, this builds and builds, stressing on the meaningful relevance of its filmmaking and character development until one particular moment. This moment comes when the two men decide to meet face to face, and in turn, both of their worlds fall apart. Adam wants to get a closer look into Anthony's life, while Anthony feels threatened by this man who seems to want to take over him. So Anthony uses his arrogance, his forceful personality, to overtake Adam, like society does to him as well. He controls him by intimidation, by following his girlfriend to work, and therefore, controls the conflict of the film. Control is of course that very something that Adam doesn't have. But as the film progresses, Anthony eventually orders Adam to allow him to take his girlfriend on a romantic getaway, simply because he's a domineering, sexually fulfilled character, while Adam can seem to be sexually frustrated due to his rocky relationship with the woman who stays over his apartment every night. In retaliation, Adam infiltrates Anthony's life by going to his apartment, changing into his clothes, and sleeping beside Anthony's pregnant wife, who also looks very similar to Adam's girlfriend. Like the comparison between Adam and Anthony, she is the idealised version of Adam's partner. He does the same thing Anthony is doing, transitioning into a vastly different life from their own, because in a way, Anthony is just as unfulfilled as Adam and wants the chance to play a different role. It's only when the movie gets to its final scene that the meaning of this film becomes much more clearer. The moment Adam walks into Anthony's bedroom to find his wife, he stumbles upon a gigantic tarantula hiding in the corner of the room. Enemy is a film about a man unwittingly living in a totalitarian regime, constraining his creativity, thus forcing him to live out an idealised fantasy in the form of a doppelganger. In my own opinion, Anthony doesn't exist. He's a figment of Adam's imagination, and this chase he goes on to uncover who this mysterious actor is, is simply a chase to find purpose in his own life. It's only when Adam hits the climax of his idealised life, in Anthony's lush apartment and everything that comes with it, that he is put back into reality by seeing the tarantula overtake the life he subconsciously dreamed of having. It's a jolting kind of ending, like a dream that one enjoys, only to be abruptly awoken back to reality. Denis Villeneuve said in an interview that sometimes you have compulsions that you can't control coming from the subconscious. They are the dictator inside ourselves. And Adam can't help but create an idealised fantasy of a life he wishes he would live. He is caught in a web of a totalitarian regime that aims to run out creativity and self-expression, like a tarantula weaving a web that insects unintentionally fly into, trapping themselves in for the rest of their lives. Adam's journey to uncover the life of his alter ego and idealised self is a detailed metaphor of self-expression and exploration. It's only when the tarantula comes to haunt him that he realises it was all just in his head and an idealisation. All in all, this movie beautifully symbolises that guilt is like an ever-growing scary spider which haunts and broods the hero. To me, this is the meaning of enemy, but what it speaks to is something that Denis Villeneuve does in every movie he makes. It may be less or more extreme in others, but it can teach us about him as a filmmaker. I'm talking about how Denis creates meaning in his films. Villeneuve says that at the end of the day, the reason why everyone goes to see movies is to be moved by the poetry of the image. 
poetry is undoubtedly the most critical component of good cinema. If you talk to film fans and mention the title of a well-known movie, it's likely that some key moments or set pieces will come to mind. Those frames were imprinted for a reason. That, he says, is because those images had a profound meaning. That meaning is orchestrated by the movement of the camera, the light, the design, and the elements that create an invisible meaning. To Denis, this is poetry. He says that the goal should be to have as many of these moments as you can to profoundly impact the audience by creating images that they will never forget. And the director is well known for creating tension that draws you in, only elevated by the meaning he puts on display. If we look at Enemy, and even Prisoners and Sicario, they all have a way of creating incredible tension between characters in impossible situations. It makes it hard for you to look away. He says that one of the key elements for tension is that you need to make people relate to the narrative through the subconscious mind. You have to bring the story to life, whether that can be through lights, props, or anything that makes it feel real. The director says that you have to bring in something for your audience to relate to and give them a clue to create suspense about something that will happen. You need to make the audience wonder. And like in the case of Enemy, something doesn't need to happen every time, because a poetic aspect can come from the absence of that thing happening on screen. This is the essence I get from watching the film, and it's Denis Villeneuve focusing in on that, the subconscious experience. On the concept of boundaries explored in Enemy, we all have multiple identities inside of us. It's about the power of subconscious and how our actions represent that side of the self and who is really in control. The influence of the past on our lives and the strength of the past is something that really terrorizes us because it means that we aren't totally in control of our actions. And something that is more connected to his more recent films is that the language of a movie is part of the equation that creates and elevates the meaning of it. The massive metropolitan area in Enemy that's oppressive inspires it and it creates fear and paranoia because you feel there are too many souls around you. It gives you a claustrophobic feeling and handles ambiguity and symbolism in a clever way while still providing the more concrete thrills of watching a great actor and director do adventurous and striking work. It's a rare thing today, and that's why, to me, Enemy is so brilliant. But that was my video essay on Denis Villeneuve's Enemy, and the importance of meaning that he puts into his work. What will be intriguing to see in Dune is how the director will balance the artistic and blockbuster approaches. I believe the director will take a more grounded approach, but one which also shows more clearly the ideas, meaning, and questions that Dune and science fiction fans want to see. I will be doing videos that go deeper into this in the coming months, and it will be fascinating to see which route he eventually takes. But let me know down below what you personally thought towards Denis Villeneuve's Enemy, alongside things that you find intriguing about how the director uses meaning in his work. My next video in this Road to Dune marathon continues with Denis Villeneuve's Prisoners, where I will be going deeper into how the director crafted a narrative maze of perfection. This will be released in the next week, alongside much more content on Dune 2021, coming over the next few months. To stay up to date with this series, along with all the latest news on Denis Villeneuve's Dune, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating, and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.